<laughs> hey guys, this is Tyler with Hawks Motorsports. Coming to you guys today with my good friend Jason Keller. We're gonna talk to you guys in regards to a 1985 IROC that we just got finished building for Jason. What I wanna talk about today with you guys is me and Jason are gonna go over his racing career, uh, some of his accomplishments in racing, what brought him to Hawks Motorsports for us to build uh, his dream of the 85 IROC Z, and just to go over what his goals and expectations were and what his thoughts were on delivery of the vehicle. So I want to talk to you a little bit about to let everybody know who you are, what you come from. Tell me what got you into racing, uh, what your most memorable race was in Bush Series and in uh, the Grand National Series, and kind of give you a little bit of background on yourself. Well, uh, all of it started with my dad. You know, you've met him several times, yep. and uh, I know you're real tight with your dad as well. And uh, Pop and I started back uh, racing when I was 10 years old, racing go-karts all around the southeast, really all around the country. And I, I often laugh and say that I would, I would go to sleep in, in Virginia on a Friday night after a race, and, 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 uh, and, and then I'd wake up in, you know, three states over and, uh, and race the next night. So uh, that all led to the Bush Series and just the progression of going through the late models. At, 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 I started at Anderson Speedway on the asphalt. And, different things and uh, had, a, had a lot of success there. And he never was, my dad would never was a guy that just was, was content to uh, win track championships or do anything. He wanted to always progress. And that, that's what moved us over into the, uh, to the Bush Series then. At the time, there wasn't a truck series. So uh, we were able to buy a car and uh, put a group of just local guys together. And that's what was so special about our first win at uh, Indianapolis uh, IRP in, in 95 because I, mean, I still look at that picture and I still look at the suit on the wall and the trophy and, and, the, and the flag and I go, I don't know that we were supposed to be there. You yeah. know, I don't know that we were supposed to, to, to have that kind of success. And I think if we thought about it at the time, we probably wouldn't have had that much success yeah. because we were just doing what we love to do and that's the only thing we knew to do. Um, and and really that win was a culmination of all of the laps at, at, at Anderson and all of the wins at Anderson. And even prior to that, all of the laps around the dirt tracks around the, the Carolinas and, and different things. So that win and for, and for my dad to be in victory lane with his car, yeah. you know, that was the coolest thing. So it, that for me, they're all special. Don't get me wrong. I was very, very fortunate to win uh, several races. I won, one from from Bristol all the way to Talladega so those type race tracks are special just because of what they are but for me personally the team aspect that I had and when I won that first one in 95 was uh, was, was really special and and it was my wife was there so really the it, we didn't have kids at the time but we found out a week later that she was pregnant for the first time so I can see that picture and see all of those stories and see all everything that no one else sees or knows and and how special it was and looking back at that it seems like yesterday but it seems like a, you know years and years ago so it was but a lot of a lot, a lot of good memories kind of so you said your first car was the 85 i rock so tell me a little bit about that and and kind of what uh how that come to be well my my dad early on even when i started racing about that time he was very specific to make sure that i didn't do a lot of street racing so it was it was one of these things you know uh, I, had, I had big stereo, I had, I had a lot of cool you know, shine on it and, and wheels and, and, and really it was my pride and joy. But I was actually even I was starting a dirt race at the time locally. So he said, you, you race on the track and, and, you, and you cruise and you, and you sound good and you look good uh, on the street. So uh, I was able to do that and, and I've had just so many wonderful memories in that car. And, and, and what, another thing that led me back to that as i went to car shows i realized that most of the people there had a personal connection with their car mm -hmm. so for me it was hard to get the feeling and the personal connection of other cars because i didn't have a story about it i didn't have a a, a background about it with it and so the 85 i rock I've got those stories. I got the stories driving it to the beach, you know, uh, you know, first week. I've got all of those. And this generation may not remember that, but I mean, that's what that's what us old guys For used sure. to do, you know. We used to drive to the beach and just have fun with it. So, those are the stories that I wanted to go back and feel. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very adamant to you. 
don't change the steering wheel. Yeah. You know, this steering wheel is, is something that I wanted to, to feel in my hands. Yeah. And uh, uh, we changed the seats a little bit, but you and I were very specific on mm -hmm. don't, don't, I don't want, you know, this, that, and that. And, and you guys really accomplished everything and every feel that I wanted. My first car was a 1985 IROC. So it kind of takes me all the way back to there. And that was one of the reasons I came to Hawks was because uh, I wanted that nostalgia back to that. And, and I really, I knew you guys uh, at Hawks, but I didn't know um, everything about you. So when I started researching this build, I'm like, they're just, you know, not far away from me. So I had to really, uh, it just kind of, everything lined up and, and uh, it's been a great experience with Hawks. And, uh, definitely exceeded every expectation I had. You know, I really wanted to tie it in with the performance mm -hmm. of, and, and the, the racing background, I know one of the first things I talked to your dad about, and a lot of people kind of pushed me away from it, I like exposed carbon. So we were able to, you guys, not we, uh, you guys at Hawks were able to incorporate some of the things performance wise that I felt was really cool back in the day mm -hmm. for me early on in my racing career and tie it into this IROC and, and tie it into an 85 IROC, which was my first car, to tie all of that in together. And here we are, you know, 20 minutes away from each other, your shop mm -hmm. and here, and uh, it just couldn't have come at a better time and, and with a better group. So going into the engine bay of the car now, we're gonna talk about the engine itself, the details we done for the engine, tying into Jason's racing background and the motorsports background of a lot of the small details that we've done that you'll see at a car show if you're working on the car and all the little tiny things that you'll see, you always find something new on this car. So going back to the suspension we talked about earlier, this is the Detroit Speed caster camber plates uh, that we use from Detroit Speed that comes with their Speed 3 kit. Uh, we do utilize bare brake systems on the car, so this is their remaster uh, master cylinder and their adjustable proportioning valve. Uh, we used a trick flow external regulator. We did use the 99-02 style tank, but with the fuel supply of this car being on pump gas 93 and E85, we did have to have an adjustable fuel pressure regulator. Uh, we did a custom 5-inch to 4.5-inch cold air intake to supply the Kong ported LSA blower with a Nick Williams 103 throttle body. Uh, through DSX tuning and Synergy Motorsports, we were able to get rid of the factory LSA Z01 lid and we used a billet LS9 style lid that helps keep our intake air temperatures down for more horsepower. So, and we use CNR uh, intercooler bricks inside of the lid. We utilized, again, our Hawks 2-inch primary headers because we want to cram all that boost in the engine. We got to have enough to get it out of the engine. Uh, LSX Innovations accessory drive system on this car. We utilized a 2-3 upper pulley and a 9.5-inch overdriven lower crank pulley. Um, Wizard cooling system on the car. So we utilize their 3rd gen 82-92 to radiator and brushless spall fan combo and we did AN fittings on everything of the car. So every aspect you see of this car from the blower lid and the heat exchanger system to the upper and lower radiator hoses, the catch can, every fitting, the fuel system is AN on this car. Dash eight, six, 10, 12, even 20 we went up to on the cooling system. We did a custom fabricated in-house heat exchanger tank and coolant overflow reservoir. Uh, with everything going on in this engine bay, it was hard for us to keep those factory big bulky third gen coolant reservoirs and washer fluid tanks. So what we did is we did utilize a custom fabricated tank for the heat exchanger system for the supercharger, the coolant overflow, and the windshield washer fluid itself. Um, this is a street car. That was a big thing with Jason that we discussed was we wanted to keep AC on the car. So that goes back to the LSX Innovations. Well, the car does have ice cold AC. Uh, that was one big thing for us building street cars at Hawks Motorsports is what's a street car without AC? You got to have it. Uh, the bottom end in the motor is a stock bottom end LSA. Uh, we have done ARP head studs in the engine. We utilize the BTR Stage 3 positive displacement camshaft and we utilized a uh, stock LSA cylinder head but with all the supporting components, the dual valve spring kit for the camshaft, the CHE trunnion kit for the rocker arms. So a lot of the engine bay details that we had on the car for Jason was ARP stainless hardware, 
Uh, when Jason come to us and he said, I don't want this to be your typical just LS swap third gen. I want all the detail to be there to really wow people. That was one thing we did. So all the hardware on the engine has been ARP stainless steel hardware from the blower lid bolts, the coil pack bolts, the valve cover, the engine bay hardware that holds the fenders, the front bumper, the front supports, the upper radiator shroud. Every piece of hardware you see on this car is ARP stainless hardware. Uh, the JK logo was a big thing for us that we wanted to incorporate on this car. So we wanted small details that really showed you, Jason, that this was his car and this was his dream of a car. So what we did is we had the JK logo engraved on the blower lid. Uh, we also had the racecraft lid uh, done for the heat exchanger. So we have all these race components that are tied into the engine bay. From the racecraft lid, it ties into everything that we have on the engine that is race inspired. The AN fittings, the specific components, wizard cooling system, the turn one steering box. We tried to keep all of this stuff really race inspired for Jason on this car where to the outside, you see a typical IROC, but when you get to the guts of this car, it really is a true motorsports race inspired IROC. All that's left on this car that is original is the chassis itself and the interior itself. Everything else has been either touched, replaced, um, built better. So we're gonna go through all of that. So what we did, um, starting with the suspension and we're gonna go through the drive line and the rear end of the car. On the front of the car, we used a Detroit Speed Speed 3 front kit on it. Um, so it utilizes their A-arms, the JRI uh, single adjustable shocks. We did uh, a turn one steering box on the car, uh, all Moog front suspension components, the steering linkage, uh, the Detroit Speed sway bar. We used a Tremec Magnum F T56 transmission uh, mated to the engine by a McLeod RXT twin disc clutch. We used our Hawks LSX swap cross member. Uh, we used a Stainless Works. We work with them and they do a private label two inch primary header, three and a half inch Y pipe to a three and a half inch exhaust system for us. This is a nice system where it keeps everything very tucked, clean underneath the car, uh, gets great ground clearance and just really fits the car really nicely. So I wanted to keep the quality there. That was one thing that we did with Jason is talking about the quality. We wanted to tie into the racing. Uh, we had this fully ceramic coated. Uh, we had the full exhaust system ceramic coated. Moving on back, we utilized a drive shaft shop, three and a half inch aluminum drive shaft, uh, UMI Performance full length torque arm on the rear of the car. Moving to the rear end of the car itself, we have one of our Hawks 8.8 .8 rear ends. Uh, we did do a little bit things differently on this rear end as we tied into Jason's uh, racing background some. We did some lightweight aspects on this rear end. We used a Detroit Speed 3 kit in the rear with the remote reservoir JRI shocks, their lower control arms, Detroit Speed sway bar and panhard bar. Uh, we did utilize a UMI upper panhard bar on the car for a little bit more exhaust clearance and utilized bare brakes on all four corners. We did one of our Hawks in-tank twin 450 liter per hour fuel pump systems utilizing a 99 to 02 LS1 rear fuel tank. So talking about the exterior of this car, we originally started with a 19,000 mile, all original 85 IROC Z. We did want to throw in some nice touches in there uh, to incorporate the build we were going for, but we didn't want to get away from the factory look of the IROC. So what we did was we utilized one of our five inch Hawks rear spoilers, Forge line custom one off IROC Z ZL1 wheels, bare six piston brakes on all four corners, 14 inch in the front and 13 inches in the rear, Starbuck innovative designs, front fog lights, and functional brake ducts to keep the brakes cool if Jason decides to autocross and road course the car, as well as one of our Hawks IROC reproduction grills. It really tied in the whole build to this car when we put on the ultra carbon IROC Z hood with the track spec louvers, that really helped show everything for the actual racing background. The custom forge line wheels that they did for us are 18 by 10 and a half on all four corners. We wrapped those in a Falcon Azenus 
315 by 30, 18, 200 Treadwear Street and Autocross Tire. The stance of the car we wanted to keep where we still had ground clearance, but we wanted to try to get this car on the ground as much as we could uh, just for the simple look of it and aerodynamics of the car if Jason really wants to start racing and getting after it on road courses and uh, autocrosses with this car. So with the combo that we have in this car and all the modifications that we've done to this LSA six speed combo, uh, we do have this car again on flex fuel. So it runs on pump gas 93 or E85. So I wanted to give you guys some numbers of what this monster made. On pump gas 93, it made 722 rear wheel horsepower and 665 foot pounds of torque. And on E85, made 795 horsepower, 720 foot pounds rear wheel torque.